I believe you got the talent and passion to become a great digital artist, and it's only a matter of time and practice to achieve it. For that reason, I decided to create the biggest digital painting tutorial channel in YouTube. It's easy, detailed, and personalized. Subscribe. Don't you want to be part of it? Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Digital Painting Tutorials with Jesus Conde, which is me. And today we're going to be making a glass bottle. So let's get started with that. So the first thing we're going to do is a little sketch of this bottle. And I want you to notice that I'm not using any weird brush. It's just a normal brush that is, um, it has opacity changes with the pressure and it keeps the same thickness so it's nothing nothing fancy at all um, while I was doing the sketch I really didn't know um, some stuff <clears throat> that is actually helpful uh, that now that I did it I, <laughs> I can tell you about for example um, the thickness of the of the brush that I'm using is perfect. It's just perfect to the to do the thickness the thickness of the bottle itself. So we're gonna use that as a guide uh, to making the thickness of the bottle, and it's going to help us a lot. So now while I was doing it, I quickly noticed that and I started using it. But at the moment that I was doing it, I, I didn't know. So that's the that's the cool part. Of, of making it this way and then be able to comment and tell you about it. So notice that at some point here I do that. I, I kind of highlight this part. That thickness we're going to use that. We're going to use the thickness we did with the, with the first brush uh, to our advantage. And now we're going to, to be making kind of a um, more defined uh, line um, and we're going to use that thickness to, to our advantage okay right there we're just drawing the cork which is which I don't touch like at the to the middle of the tutorial in terms of, of color but okay let's concentrate with the with the <clears throat> with a sketch right there what I, what you saw is that I I flipped the image horizontally because when, when you're working with perspective right right there I'm not, I'm not doing any vanishing point stuff but when you're working with stuff that it needs to be perfect in perspective even that this one is not completely perfect it has some little mistake but kind of um, they, they are kind of loose so you're not going to be able to see it right away but anyway um, the thing when you flip the canvas you notice all these mistakes um, it, and it's not just in perspective it is, it is in everything if you're working with anatomy when you flip the image you notice um, you notice the problems in the proportions and stuff like that more easier because you are used to used to the drawing your eyes are used to, to the drawing the way you were doing it when you flip the image, um, you you can see from uh, like a, with new eyes, and that will give you another point, another <clears throat> another way to see to see things, and what and see all the mistakes cl clearly. Okay, so now what I'm going to do here here I try to do something with the with the top part of the of the bottle, but I quit it. <laughs> I quit uh, those changes that I was doing. I kept kept it the way it was, so it doesn't it really doesn't matter. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, here we go again. Okay, so the first thing you gotta do is kind of check your reference. What what wasn't the reference that is going to give me that start for this material? So the most important thing, uh, and you notice, you're going to notice because first I do like a little test. Um, the most important thing of this material are the highlights. Um, that could be called specular in 3D. If we were talking in 3D, you will call it specular. 
but let's call it highlight. Uh, right there, I'm just taking some colors to see what happens, but I'm just trying to kind of um, do some kind of uh, I don't know little test to to see what could work to achieve this material. So right now, I'm doing some tests of, of shading. I'm using 20% of the brush, and it's the same brush we used at the beginning for the sketch, so it's nothing weird. Um, our light is coming; is going to come this side, in, and the light source should be kind of square looking. But this is just a test, and right there I'm just trying to to kind of achieve that result. Um, we need little, little uh, kind of copying the reference we have there. Uh, so I quickly noticed that just one light source is not enough, or at least doesn't doesn't look like one light source could look great on this glass bottle. So we need two, two or three light sources <clears throat> to make it look cool enough. Um, so notice that I have this highlight right there and you can see down there another highlight okay so now I'm serious <laughs> and I started I start with the some highlights in there just to test things around you have to be kind of um, horizontal looking too so I, I, I thought let's start with the beginning so we're going to be making these little highlights from top to bottom <clears throat> And they're going to be all in the kind of in the same vertical line, the same vertical direct direction. So we have one there, one there, one there, and they are they they are going to be on the surface that is looking kind of up to the to the light. So notice that it kind of kind of in, in a straight line. That little curve down there in the bottle is looking is looking that light. That is up there too. Okay, so this is one light. <clears throat> now I thought, okay, so we need another one, but let's let's make it more, let's make it more white, more um, shiny and bigger. Um, this is going to be based on a square, so let's try to make it a little bit wider and a little bit bigger in all the parts and we're going to do the same I'm just copying the same idea on the on the left do it on the right because it's the same shape but I'm doing it with the square then I'm doing some tests with the smudge tool kind looks kind of cool so I left it <coughs> the opposite which is the 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 part down there that is looking up and quickly I noticed that just one light source doesn't look cool enough so I put little points just to guide myself so let's try to do the same in there here is is vertical so we have to make it uh, larger vertically here another point there and that's what I thought, okay, this is start to look a little bit better. But now the left the left specular thing, the left the left highlight is kind of um hard, so I'm going to change the opacity a little bit. There I change the opacity, just a little. Okay. Now it's looking better. Now I gain a little of um confidence while doing this material but because remember that at the beginning I really don't know what I'm going to do so now I gain a little bit of, of confidence doing the material so let's do the next part which is going to be those greens um, inside of the bottle which I love it, they look so cool on the on some of them it's going to be kind of a like black or gray or depending on the the material depending on the color of the glass but I like the green so let's go in, let's go in, we're going to use the green um, this green color should be um, the way I see it should be inside of the of the walls of the 
of the bottle. So let's take that green color right there. <clears throat> and let's just paint it inside of the wall. I make it I, I did it a little bit more um colorful, more saturated. So there we go. <clears throat> I'm going to be making this inside of the wall instead of the wall of the of the glass let's see what happens <clears throat> okay see um, there I did a little bit more um, colorful because it had the highlight right there um, try not to do it constant notice that I left some parts that are um, like holes on the material. There are parts that I, are totally transparent. You cannot see them at all. Mm, kind of like a like a transition from zero to twenty percent of the of the color or something like that. Uh, I try to put a little bit to the center, like it was, like if it was. Um, part of the of the of that glass wall that is existing in there in the air you cannot see it but it's there and here I'm doing some tests of the kind of blending that I'm using so it's, it's by repetition I make few lines one on top of the other really quick and that's a cool way to do it and as you are using 20% of the opacity you can if you if you repeat the same stroke on top of the other, you get like one stroke is 20%, two strokes in the same in the same area is 40%. If you get you do three strokes, is 60%. Stuff like that. It's a really easy way of blending. Okay, so <clears throat> this green part is looking good. I thought. Um, Let's see what I do next because I don't remember completely. Okay, I copy that. <clears throat> and I'm trying to work, I'm trying to make a change every 10 minutes so you can see the progress. The only part that I don't do that is in the ending, which I, I take off the 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 timer and just paint without with a time and that way I can I can try to be more specific more detailed okay so right there what I'm going to do is just use a black color a black value you're going to start making these little shadows which are really reflections or refractions sorry about that <clears throat> kind of sleepy. Um, is, are there going to be reflections or refractions inside of the bottle? Um, they're going to be completely black. They're going to be completely black. There's no no color at all. <clears throat> um, but well, in the reference that you have right there, the one of, on the left, which is a really clear bottle. Um, that black is actually coming from the from the table that the bottle is in, so that should that should be the explanation for that. That black is because of the table. If you were using a brown table, maybe it's not the color you were using is not wouldn't be black. It will be um, brown or something. Is the painting of of where you're where your table is, what you're working on. Um, I want to apologize because the only thing that I'm not going to cover, which is something that I realized at the end, was the shadow of the of the bottle. Um, it's because it's kind of complex. It's something called caustics. It's the way the light goes through the glass and makes some weird colors on the table or in the thing that is um, making the shadow <clears throat> okay so right there I'm, I I took kind of a gray color 
from the bottle uh, reference, uh, the the first one on the left, um, it's not completely gray. It's kind of a little, it's a little green, but just a little. And I'm just trying to put um, some some um, brightness on the right side because the right side is the one that has the 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 strongest light. Right there, I'm using a really really soft a really really soft um, brush, and then I put the layer. Um, how do I say that? Um, before the one of the of the of the specular because I, on the top it just made the specular uh, darker. <coughs> and now we're going to go with the cork. So I take the I took the the darkest color, the darkest color that I got on the reference, put it right there. Um, and I noticed that I needed a shadow, so I started to make this shadow kind of like inside of the bottle and under under that thick part of the bottle. <coughs> It was actually easier than I thought to do this cork. I thought, okay, I'm going to left the cork at the end. I'm a bit lazy of making that cork. Sorry again. <laughs> okay, so now I took the the bright part, the bright part of the of the cork. <clears throat> um. I'm trying to leave some little spaces to keep the material kind of try to imitate the material of the cork. So I'm trying to let little spaces between these kinds of points that I'm doing. So I just concentrate on a small part, leave space, then concentrate on a small part again, stuff like that. It's really easy. It's like a pattern. Um, and at this point you shouldn't you shouldn't Concentrate on, on the details of it. Uh, leave leave a little little few parts with more brightness, so you can see kind of like a specular uh, brightness change that looks really cool. So the part that comes now is actually mm, I never thought about it, but when I was doing the reference, I thought, okay, let's try something that you guys could see. Um, cool about this tutorial. So we're going to try to make some reflections. I had this little picture of a kitchen, and I did. I need everything blocked because one mistake here, and it's going to be a mess. So everything is blocked. The only thing that is not blocked is the is the layer I'm painting on. And what I'm going to do is trying to copy the colors of the of the picture, kind of like if if it was a reflection but would you going to paint the reflection like if it's completely there there's no there's no transparency there's no anything you just paint it completely <clears throat> paint it completely in there like it's like this you were making a drawing uh, reflected <clears throat> In this part, you should have um, the reflection should be with uh, little, like repeat the same stuff but little. And then when you change the opacity, you're going to notice that it looks kind of like a reflection. That's the that's what we're trying to achieve in there. And this is going to work with everything that has reflections. You can use another another image, another reflection. <laughs> another reflection image. Um, this is something I thought about um, while working with 3D stuff. That you, you you just put a reflection map on stuff, and you can quickly see the reflection. And in the material material editor, you can you can change the the intensity of this material. So I I thought, how can you do the same on painting? Well, just paint the reflection completely, like if it was one uh one hundred percent reflection and then just change the opacity that should give you the same exact result that you get on the three d so I tried and this is how it looks 
So I really hope you like this technique of making reflections because I, I just love it. It looks, um, it looks so, you can achieve good results in so, so, so short time. Um, and of course, remember that I'm doing this really quick. So if I don't make it look cooler, it's because I, I don't want you guys to get bored by hours of, of, of tutorial. Um, but I trust that you guys will use it. Um, you guys will use it good, so it's okay. <clears throat> this is just a guide. So in this side, I'm going to paint the colors that are uh, I think could be reflecting that side. So that is really cool. I thought it was a really cool technique. <clears throat> okay guys, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Um, please share this video, please like it. Um, share it with your friends that are also learning. You can make any comments, you can make suggestions about what tutorials to do next week. Um, some, sometimes I, I do the ones I just like that I read. Uh, sometimes I do rotations. Sometimes I I put it put them on a list and eventually it will be done. So please make a comment. Um, let's see. <clears throat> right there, I'm just trying to put little more variations on the on that reflection because it's almost the final step. So this this part should be cool as as possible. So the final step is also cooler. Um, when I copy, when I copy the, when I copy the image for the final, final step of this painting, I have to copy the two layers again, the layers of the bottle and the layer of the reflection, because we don't want to, we don't, we don't want to, to put that together, right? We we want to keep it um, in different layers so you can change the opacity of reflection later again. Okay, so I'm always checking now. I'm always checking the the recording because last time I did a tutorial, I didn't record the whole thing. And I have to start all over again with a new one and that was that was really stressful because I I I had so short time. I had tons of stuff to do and I didn't have too much time to make the tutorial but I knew um, I can fail you guys so I tried to do my best and I I did it but I, I, I did a tutorial for that day but it was really really stressful so now I'm always checking if I'm really recording <laughs> or is it pause <coughs> Okay, so now what I'm going to do is try to to make it more uh, to make more definition on this bottle. Um, if you notice in the original pictures of bottles, we have so tiny details, and we want to achieve that. We need to achieve those little details. So this is the way: doing little lines, doing more variations on the colors. All that stuff is going to make you to make it feel more like a real bottle. <clears throat> I'm going to put little lines on the floor, like if it was reflecting reflecting that floor that way. At some point I tried to make the reflection from the inside, but it's really hard. Um, and I thought it, it didn't need it, so I just left it that way. There I used the dodge tool because I wanted a brighter color of that brown. So <coughs> I used the dodge tool a little bit in there. See, I'm starting to try to do 
some reflection inside but then I decided not to do it because it's going to be overworked and I don't want it to look like that I actually kind of kind of like the when you see a painting and you see that it's painted you know it's not real because when it's too real I mean I don't I don't know the fun of it. I I make some realistic stuff, but I also on the realistic stuff try to do it try to let some parts that are not completely real. Doesn't doesn't look completely real. Okay, so right there I needed a more brighter color for the green. I thought okay, this brighter color look good. So then I, I'm going to be doing some changes with that. And for the highlights, I needed more white. I needed to be more, even more highlight, highlight. And <clears throat> I needed more, also more quantity. I needed more highlights everywhere. So that's what you're going to see on this last part of the video, making a little tiny highlights everywhere to get that look, realistic look to it. Please don't forget to check out my Facebook page, guys. Sometimes I put some drawings in there. Right, right now I'm really, really busy, but I promise I will put some drawings and stuff when I when I get done something. Right now I'm doing a poster for a for a YouTuber that is really good. She, her name is Anna Akana, and it's kind of a comedy. Um, but she has some really cool videos and has tons of subscribers. So right now I'm trying to work something out with her um, and the poster for uh, for her new short film. And I'm going to be posting that. <coughs> okay. So right now I'm just doing little lines and little points everywhere to make it look more defined. Um, you can see that double, those double lines, double reflection one a uh, little one um at one side of the other stuff like that works perfect works really good on the reflections makes it look more um detailed and that's what we want right now I'm using a brighter green And try not to do it constant. You have, you gotta left some parts uh, with more intense color. You have and some other parts doesn't have too much of that intense color, and that's what's going to give you that realistic look. So that's what we want to achieve. Okay, so right now, uh, just like I said before, little lines everywhere um, of the reflections. That's going to give you a cool effect. And don't make it constant. If you make a constant light from top to bottom, or, or at least with the kind of glass, this kind of glass should be looking like, should look like if it's mm, not... Um, how do I say that? It's not perfect. It's got these little bumps everywhere. It's not like a mm, made by a manufacturer or something. It's more like making by make by hand. And it should look like this. It should look a little like with disorder. <laughs> I thought it was really cool. Okay, so right there I'm starting to be proud of the result. I never thought it was going to look like this. I thought it was going to look a little bit more fake. Um, so I'm really glad that it looks like that because I want to teach you as much as I can. 
and also I want you to know that I'm also learning at the same time it's not just teaching you um, I, I don't see myself as a teacher um, more like um, someone that is trying to help and that's it <coughs> okay so now right now it's just that just making little lines little points everywhere to try to sell that result try to achieve that look that is that this is a complete and we do that by checking up the the borders the the edges uh, doing little details all the stuff is going to make you well, uh, when the people watch this um, drawing, they're going to believe it's complete because it has so tiny details. That's what's going to sell the image as if it's, if it's completed. <clears throat> okay, so now I put a little bit of 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 a glowing effect with a new with another brush a really soft brush and just one stroke in a new layer and that's it for that time I noticed that I didn't have anything on the floor or I was going to need a shadow and I just got completely mad because I thought oh my god now I'm going to have to do another video with a shadow of it of this um, but I think it's better because that way you don't get that whole information at the same time and I can explain you better later so I think it was actually good that I didn't do the the shadow on there okay guys so this is it this is my time I hope you like this tutorial please share please subscribe please go to my Facebook page add me on Twitter Instagram <laughs> you can see all that on the description all those pages are in the description. I really hope you like this tutorial. See you, see you next week, guys. See you next week.